All right, everybody, welcome to Fear is Contagious, the book review here. I'm with Melissa, and we are definitely practicing social distancing. She's definitely more than six feet away, and we are making sure we got our masks on to make sure, just in case oh, yeah. I sneeze during the interview, that nothing bad happens. So how do you like, I see that you actually have a high-end 3M mask. That's amazing. And uh, I think you got the hookup because you actually work for 3M, right? I do, and I've had this mask for several years, so I don't want people thinking that 3M employees are hoarding these because we would be fired if we did that. They are all going straight to the hospitals. All right, well, we are about to do the interview right now, so I'm going to actually take off the mask, and we'll go from there. Are you ready? All right, I will mask off too. So, Alex, tell me, what is this book about? Well, every hundred years, there is a pandemic of some sorts. So we've had the Spanish flu literally a hundred years ago, and now we have the coronavirus. This book was written um, as a sequel to my book called Borderline, and it has a lot of the same characters that are divided into three separate groups. Now, what they find out throughout the story is, although there is this crazy pandemic and this virus, but even more dangerous is fear itself. Wow. So... My understanding is that Borderline is semi-autobiographical. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. So what about Fear is Contagious? Is that autobiographical or is it a work of fiction? I would say it's taking it to the next level. Um, there are things that are real that have happened. Um, specifically, you know, my sister getting mad about the exposure that Borderline has given her. Um, and then also there's another part where my, my brother is incarcerated at this time. And he is having to deal with being isolated during the pandemic. And then finally, there is this part of the book where in real life, when it first started the pandemic, I didn't know what to do. And I was thinking I needed to take my family and leave a big city like Los Angeles to go be with my parents in Denver. So those were all real. And those were the seeds that led to an extrapolated, fictitious account of what would happen if those circumstances went to the 10th degree. Wow. So it's really planted some seeds of creativity in you during this global pandemic. Yeah. And what was ironic was because I finally had time to myself to write, I got this book done in seven days. So um, wow, know, there was a lot of ammunition that I could pull from, from you know current events and just once again, extrapolating what could happen in the worst case scenario. And then every time I got writer's block, I was able to go to the next character or the next environment. And I was able to just kind of rotate between those three to keep the pace of the book, uh, you know, fast and upbeat. Incredible. So what is the key message of this book? I think the key message, once again, is that fear is contagious and that if you let it take it in, it can be more destructive than any virus on the planet. And what happens is if you take this fear, like, you know, these first responders, they have to deal with this on a daily basis. It can overtake them. So in this case, in this book, um, the father of the family, the way to counter fear is faith. So that is the antidote, faith and love and courage. Those are the things that help defeat fear and help um, you overcome any obstacle. So that's really how all the characters end up overcoming the fear that they have in the book. Absolutely. When we look at fear in terms of human behavior, a little bit of fear is healthy. It keeps us from falling off of a cliff or climbing too high on a tree but it sounds like in this book, you're really discussing when fear becomes toxic and prevents you from truly living your life, enjoying your life, and also treating others with respect and dignity. Yes. And even now, as you know, in the news, just the fact that there's, you know, a little bit of uh, racist, uh, racism and prejudice in the, you know, today's world of people calling it the China virus or, yes. you know, immigrants being targeted in some ways because they are now, you know, let's say they're working in meatpacking plants, but now they're being seen as, right. um, you know, negligent in some way for why they may have coronavirus. Like all these different factors and that how, you know, something as innocent as a mask that's supposed to protect you has become a political statement. That's also very interesting and in how that played out. Absolutely, absolutely. In the foreword of your book, you, and we talked about this, that pandemics seem to occur every 100 years. And you listed out pandemics, and it was 
eerie that they really actually almost happen exactly within 100 years of one another. But you also do say that the virus of fear is much more dangerous than an actual virus. So can you elaborate on that? Well, the way I see it is, I mean, we as humans are survivors. And once again, there are things that can knock us down. It feels almost like population control. But if we can, once again, keep our mindset healthy, then we can keep our body healthy. And a lot of things, um, I won't lie to you, like I also have fallen to this fear myself. You know, when it first happened, you know, I, I packed up my car. I had like a survival kit of all the things I needed. And I was ready to just leave Los Angeles. And it actually very much affected, um, you know, the relationships that I have here in this house. And we were on different pages. And that was not comfortable, at, to say the least. So um, once I was able to kind of just say, okay, you know what? Whatever happens will happen in this house, in this city. We're going to hunker down because you can't outrun a virus. You can't, you know, outspend a virus. It, it, it tackles anyone who's rich, poor, black, white, Asian, whatever. It does not discriminate. And once I realized that you can't outrun a virus, then I just said, well, we're going to just, you know, stay here and do our best, you know, with what we have and the resources we have. Is that what inspired you to write the book? Or if it isn't, what did inspire you to write this book? I, I would definitely say that's what inspired it because once again, the events of my brother being, you know, incarcerated and having the potential of being infected and in, in like a petri dish of right. people that are sick. Oh, absolutely. Having my sister who's a first responder telling me about how she's on the front lines helping people that are sick. And then my parents who are older than, you know, in the, the proper demographic that are out right. that also was tough. And then myself, you know, having a potential health condition where right. I also am susceptible to this virus. All those factors are like, wow, that's like the perfect storm for, you know, this story all about conflict and then how they can overcome. So yeah, definitely, uh, I guess my own experiences kind of fueled the idea of making the book. And that's why it was so easy because, um, you know, a lot of it was already going on. Did you find the experience of writing the book to be cathartic after you were so fearful or did it take a toll on you emotionally and drain you? Or maybe was it a hybrid of both? So I'm the type of guy who likes to stay busy. So writing this book actually helped me not worry about all the crazy noise that was going on. And I'm the same, same type of guy who could film a tragedy or an, a car accident and be fine. But then if I'm in the real world looking at it, then I'm affected by it. So for some reason, by putting that camera in between myself and something like that helps me uh, kind of, I guess, distance myself from that type of material. And that's what writing this book helped me do is just keep my mind busy as if it were a movie rather than the real life scenario. And I think that helped me definitely. So what message do you want your readers to take away from this book after they read it? I think the message is of faith and courage and love. And, you know, once again, at any time when you're feeling alone, you can reach out to other people and it may be this way, you know, virtual, right. But still better than nothing. And there's a lot of people that are out there that are quarantined by themselves. And I think really the antidote for that is to stay busy, to, to stay productive and to stay creative. And in this case, in this book, I mean, you know, like the character that I portray in this book is all about trying to protect his family and to provide for the family. Whereas, um, you know, in each of the different stories, there's, a uh, a brother and a father who are, you know, have been estranged and this virus actually brings them together. And in some ways I would say life has improved arguably under these conditions where, you know, now I see my family every day. I used to see them sometimes 15 minutes a day and that'd be it. Right. I go to work, they right. go to school and then I go to work to another place and then right. they come home and I wouldn't see them. They'd already be asleep. So for me, um, Actually, in this book, there's um, the looming dread of my character needing heart surgery, and he happened right. to have it at the beginning of the pandemic, and then having to deal with healing under these conditions. Right. And my real life situation is the opposite because I will be getting heart surgery 
uh, maybe on the second wave, which is going to be happening in a couple months. And so, right. um, you know, anticipating the challenges that I'm going to have, because I have gone through it once before, under these conditions, right, was hard to write because it took me right back to that moment times 10. And then also um, in parts of the book, which I don't want to reveal, how the virus affects the members of the family in bad ways. Um, that was interesting too to write because it was hard to write some of that content and then imagine that it could actually really happen. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the actual virus and the illness it may cause that's really hurting these fam your family. It's really just the fear of what happens if you get it. Well, I got a story for you. So actually after this book was written, I found out that the meatpacking plants um, in the Midwest were some of the most concentrated areas where the pandemic right. struck. And my sister actually works at one of those meatpacking plants in Iowa, and they're not really given much social distancing. They're elbow no. to elbow, cutting meat on an assembly line, usually not wearing masks. Right. And um, that was just like the ideal situation for people to get sick. And my sister did end up getting the coronavirus oh, along God. with her boyfriend. And that was really scary. And it was just weird almost like a prediction that the book made, but it was a different sister and hearing right. the symptoms and just, there's this, this stigma. Like at first she wrote online that she had the coronavirus, but then she erased it. And I think she just didn't yeah. want um, the whole world to know. And now she will, but the good news is she got better. And the good news is that she was able to, um, you know, hopefully not get it again, but her whole, rest of her family luckily hasn't had it yet. So what steps do you take to prepare when you write a book? Do you just hop in front of a computer or do you write out an outline or do you record something? What are the steps specifically that you do when you're preparing to write a book? Well, definitely I write what I know. So in this case, it was my real family members and some of the different experiences that they're going through. But then what I do is I, I definitely go through an outline process. I try to figure out what's the story arc for each of the characters and then by what page that's all going to happen. And my goal is obviously to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. So, you know, by the third of the book, they have to already have detailed, like kind of like what's going to be the path of the whole story. And then by the middle, that's like where all the, the bad stuff hits the fan. And then obviously the last part is where the resolution is. But I draw from a lot of similar movies. So this particular movie, obviously, I had to watch Outbreak. I had to watch Contagion. Right. I map right. out fully those movies and by what time they hit those milestones. So I went through and I wrote about sure. a page outline from just those movies each. Um, wow. Trying to figure out, okay, this beat of this story happens at minute 10. Um, the main character so-and-so dies by minute 35. Whatever that is in that movie, I put that into uh, a framework for Fear is Contagious and it definitely helped me so much. I tried not to copy it, but I definitely took some of those beat points and I said, okay, now how can I spin it a little bit within my own reality to make a completely new story? So that's how it all came out. And then on top of that, I did a lot of visual research and a lot of research with the news for this particular story. I mean, the news was my a treasure trove of information of all the different stuff that was happening from, you know, the ship that fly, uh, that comes into New York Harbor to save the day to, um, you know, the, I think it's called the, the Javits Center in New York City, where they're trying to um, make basically makeshift hospitals for the infected. All those things became kind of part of this story. So we're right now in the thick of this, in the thick of COVID-19. And I imagine that some readers would be a little hesitant to pick up this book and read it out of, if you will, pardon the pun, fear of really reliving some of the experiences that they're going through right now and also maybe worrying that the book has a sad ending or is difficult to get through as opposed to a book with an uplifting ending and making the reader feel really good about having read it. What would you say in response to someone who's a little bit hesitant right now to pick up this book and read it? Uh, you're not alone. My own wife even told me she never will read this book and the reason why is because we are living in this tragic time and why would we want to read a book that just reminds us of the situation that we're in 
But my answer to my wife and my answer is to all the potential readers out there is, you know, this book talks about fear and it talks about how it is contagious and how it can take a grasp onto us and never let go. But at the same time, you know, it's really important to figure out ways to get past that and to once again, adapt. And in this book, all the characters have to adapt to these circumstances to move on and to actually, you know, get on with their lives. So even for me writing this book, I had to adapt with my own fear by writing the book. And by doing that, that helped me actually get past some of the fear of death and some of the fear of suffering of my family and my friends. And the fact that we're all going through this together is so unique. Never in, I think, in our lifetime has anyone had to deal with this. Once again, every hundred years, something like this has happened. But, you know, that's something few and far between that anyone could probably remember. So this book is just the beginning of many stories that are going to be written about COVID-19. And it was definitely unique to be writing it and distributing the book during the pandemic, because even now I was thinking, oh, I should add this, I should add that. But ultimately, the story is just about overcoming any adversity, no matter what size it is, on what level. And the fact that we all together are in this unified fight against this invisible enemy, it's amazing. And you can't deny that this has got to be, like, not my book, but this COVID-19 pandemic has got to be one of the most amazing, influential stories ever. Um, 9-11 is nothing compared to coronavirus. Um, you know, impeachment, I've forgotten about impeachment already. Like that that really is nothing in comparison. The fact that there's people in every state, every country dealing with this is so amazing. And then the fact that we all luckily have the internet, um, to be able to kind of be able to be with each other during this time, it's just a phenomenal back backstory for, um, for humanity. I don't know. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I used to have friends who had stage four cancer and they would say on social media, Oh, I'm dying. Please give me your hopes and prayers and all that stuff. And we would definitely do that. But now in this era, everyone is dealing with their mortality. Everyone is dealing with the chance right. that they could get sick and die. That's horrible. And you know, it's also kind of in some ways desensitized us to that. And the news every day, it gets worse every day. New celebrity dies, new whoever dies that you know um, in the public field. And you think to yourself, okay, is that going to be my father or my mother? Um, is that going to be, you know, someone that I know and that I love? Like all those things definitely fuel that fear. And I wrote this book to get through my own fear. And it helped me because I was able to push through some of the worst things that I could think of in my own world. And I wrote it in this book and then writing it. And I don't want to ruin it. I was, I was affected emotionally, um, not just because I was dealing with my own fear of my kids getting sick, but then also my parents getting sick and how I would react if the worst of worst happened to my family members. And so, um, you know, I don't know if that really is too hopeful when you hear me talk about it in that way. But definitely, I, in, in my mind, I did write this story with um, hope at the end. And I don't like, I, I'm just trying not to tell you the end, but there's a cool way that they figure out how to, um, to solve this issue. Why do you think you would read this book during the pandemic? I think I can now. I know this is weird. I've had it for over a month. And now I, I was thinking about today. I'm like, okay, now I know why. I put it aside. It's because at the moment it it was just, I I could barely get through the day. Didn't I didn't have hope before. And I think that's a hope is a really big combater of fear. Yeah. So I I totally agree. I think that um, this came out during the worst part of it. And absolutely. Yes. Talking about the book on social media because I didn't want to feel like let people think I was callous and just kind of like not caring. Um, right. But I think it's because I knew that it had an inspirational message. Whereas um, right. you look at this cover, it's freaking intimidating. There's this guy at the gas mask. He's holding. Right, right, right. And a frontline health worker looking absolutely dejected and exhausted. 
Yeah, like this is like, okay, what you can't really see maybe is in the background over here, like society has crumbled in the back. Right, the city. You see a city. Yes. Oh, yes, I do see There's burning buildings. Right yes, now I'm seeing it. Yes. Sitting there. Absolutely. Know. Well, thank you so much, Alex, for sharing this story. I know that this topic is difficult because we're in the thick of it right now, but it also really resonates with us and shows us the strength of humanity and our ability to adapt and be resilient. And it sounds like a really uplifting message for the reader. So again, thank you for sharing this book with us. And for those of you who have not seen it before, it is called Fear is Contagious. It is available on Amazon. You can also purchase it from spygamestudios.com. You may even be able to get an autograph copy. Is that correct? Yeah, so I do have personalized books that are available on our website, specifically at spygamestudios.com backslash fear is contagious. But yeah, if you want to just get it on Amazon and get it quick, that's where I recommend looking for it. And definitely, I'm so grateful to be on your show. Thank you so much for reviewing the book. And I look forward to having more conversations with other people who've had a chance to read this. And we can talk about, once again, hope, faith, courage. All those topics are really exciting to me. So thank you. Well, thank you.